Star Wars couldn't have asked for a more forbidding cable of villains than the dreaded Sith Lord, many of whom vary in power in both legends and canon. These nefarious individuals wield the immense power of the dark side of the Force, in direct antithesis to their Jedi competitors. As a result, the two factions have fought relentlessly for thousands of years, building up a series of pivotal moments in the history of the Sith Order. Sith become more powerful as they unlock secrets of the dark side, and certain practitioners have gone down in legend as the best of the best. These fearsome foes channeled all their hatred, malice, and passion, wrecking havoc across the galaxy in both continuities. It's worth nothing that many of the more powerful Sith are reserved for Star Wars Legends, but many impressive feats are also accomplished in canon. While it's challenging to fully quantify the most powerful Sith considering non-canon events and the sheer variety of dark side abilities, here are 12 of the most powerful Sith Lords in Star Wars. Number 12. Darth Cadis The twins Jason and Jaina Solo are featured heavily in Star Wars Legend. Jason was shown as a gifted youngster who grew into a capable young man and powerful Jedi Knight. Shortly after the Yuuzhan Vong invasion on the Galactic Core, the galaxy was unstable and under threat of collapse. Jason embraced the dark side in an effort to save it, taking on the mantle of Darth Cadus. With his power amplified, he slew his own aunt, Mara Jade Skywalker, and waged a war against the remnants of the government before he was finally defeated by his twin sister. Jason Solo, and therefore Darth Cadus, was first introduced in Heir to the Empire, the first book in Timothy Zahn's Throne trilogy. This trilogy outlined a sequel story to Lucas, original trilogy that was made legends by Disney. Since then, Jason Solo inspired the character of Ben Solo from the canon Star Wars sequels. While Dave Filoni's recently announced The Mandalorian movie is presumed to be a soft adaptation of Hair to the Empire, it is unlikely Darth Cadus will be canonized due to the story told beginning with Star Wars, The Force Awakens. Number 11. Vergier The character of Vergier was introduced in the New Jedi Order, series of legends novels as a strange bird like humanoid in the company of the ruthless Yuuzhan Vong race. When Jason Solo was captured by the Vong, it was Vergier who presided over his indoctrination into their culture, including the use of pain as a psychological tool. Though she claimed to be a former Jedi, Vergier was in fact a double agent working for the Sith, who intended to drive Jason toward the dark side. For all intents and purposes, she succeeded, thanks mainly to her innate force powers and clever use of Sith manipulation tactics to achieve her goals. Jason Solo became Darth Cadus. Still, for all her scheming, Vergier was a rather neutral character who let the chips fall where they may. Number 10. Darth Vader Anakin Skywalker was one of the most powerful Jedi ever to have existed, and the chosen one of Jedi prophecy who was prophesied to restore balance to the Force. This ended up being true, but the manner in which the prophecy would be fulfilled was something the Jedi couldn't possibly have expected. After being defeated by Obi-Wan Kenobi, Skywalker turned himself over fully to the dark side of the Force and became the scourge of the Jedi Order known as Darth Vader. Vader could tap into his own hatred in a way that not many Sith ever managed, and few who stood against him lived to tell the tale. Despite lacking the mobility and health of his former body, Vader was capable of raising entire structures to the ground with relative ease. Vader ranks among the most powerful Sith Lords in Star Wars canon, first appearing in A New Hope. His backstory as Anakin was explored in Lucas' prequels, leading Vader to become one of the most iconic film villains of all time. Number 9. Darth Tenebris 
The Bith known as Tenebris was one of the most powerful Sith to have existed, and he possessed several force abilities even the strongest did not have. He was also master to Darth Plagueis, and his bit signs acted as a precursor to that Sith Lord's eventual meddling with midichlorian research. Skilled in lightsaber combat, Tenebris could harness rare red force lightning, and his precognitive capabilities were astonishing. He could even pinpoint the time of his own death, which was practically unheard of among force users. It was perhaps for this reason that his experimentation with midichlorians became his obsession. Tenebris was first introduced in the novel Dark Plagueis, which is now classed as Legends. However, Tenebris has been referenced in Star Wars canon multiple times. Similar to Darth Nihilus, his status as a canon Sith Lord is cemented, though it is in Disney's hands whether his backstory will ever be explored. Number 8. Darth Plagueis If the story are to be believed, Darth Plagueis was an extremely powerful Sith Lord who attained mastery over the Force, enough to resurrect the death. This was a remarkable feat, though he wouldn't live long enough to attain the immortality he no doubt sought. Darth Sidus seized the moment to slay Plagueis, thereby taking the mantle of Sith Lord for himself. Plagueis may have simply outlived his usefulness to Sidus, who was preparing to make his move on the Republic Senate. Whatever the case, Sidus ended up slaying one of the most powerful Sith Lords ever to have lived. Also, part of Star Wars canon, Plagueis was mentioned directly by Palpatine during Star Wars, Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. As a result, Plagueis is canon to Star Wars, though his backstory remains shrouded in mystery. Whether Disney will ever delve into this story remains to be seen. Number 7. Darth Trya the woman known as Darth Trya did not showcase her affinity for the dark side in obvious ways. Rather, she was a schemer and manipulator who straddled the gray area between light and dark to fool her opponents and achieve her goals. As such, many underestimated her and fell victim to her silver tongue. Pragmatic in nature, Trya waged a campaign of destruction against the Jedi Order but her true purpose was revealed only shortly before her death. She came to view the Force as a manipulative blight on existence itself and sought to eradicate it by wounding it irreparably. Like Darth Nihilus, Trya first appeared in Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic, the Sith Lords. This means Trya is part of Star Wars Legends. With Lucasfilm acknowledging the era of the Old Republic at Star Wars Celebration 2023, the possibility remains for Darth Trya to become canon, as it does for all Old Republic era Sith Lords. Number 6. Darth Vitiate Darth Vitiate, otherwise known as the Sith Emperor, appeared in the Knights of the Old Republic games and was widely regarded as one of the most deadly Sith ever to have taken up the mantle. Before the age of adulthood, Vitiate had already massacred thousands, gaining him enough notoriety for Marco Ragnus to take notice. Vitiate gathered the remaining Sith Lords, drained their power alongside that of an entire planet, and used a combination of both to increase his own power and lifespan. He proclaimed himself in power and enjoyed a very destructive reign before the eventual demise. Number 5. Darth Sidious No other Sith Lord managed to accomplish so much through the dark side of the Force than Darth Sidious, the child of a moderately influential family on the planet of Naboo. Young Chief Palpatine rose through the ranks of the Republic Senate, eventually representing his homeworld as an influential senator. In truth, he was biding his time and orchestrating a series of events that would lead to the downfall of the Republic and the ascension of the dreaded Galactic Empire. Sidious had incredible powers of foresight, was a master strategist and could best the most powerful Jedi and Sith in combat simultaneously. Despite his elderly appearance, 
Sidis could have toppled the most powerful Sith in history with relative ease. His keen mind, pitilessly personality, and overwhelming deadly Sith powers were all too much even for the entire Jedi Order to withstand. Sidis is immortalized in Star Wars canon as the main villain of the Skywalker saga, appearing in six of the nine core movies, cementing his place as one of the most powerful Sith Lords in Star Wars history. Number 4. Darth Momin An ancient Sith Lord in the Star Wars canon, Darth Momin was a heretical Sith architect who created all sorts of horribly devastating creations and super weapons. Having tethered his spirit to his mask, Momin lived on by possessing those who wore it. This allowed Momin to construct Darth Vader's fortress on Mustafar, designed to amplify one's power in the dark side. Although Momin attempted to use the fortress himself to bring about his return, he was ultimately thwarted by Vader. However, returning his spirit to a physical body was an impressive power all the same. Number 3 the Rogue Sith Star Wars' new Rogue Sith was encountered by Luke Skywalker between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Not unlike Momin, all the pain and darkness of this unnamed Rogue Sith was used to maintain his spirit within his own Sith Kyber crystal long after his death. As such, Luke confronts this living pain during an attempt to heal the Kyber finding himself in a spiritual manifestation of the Sith Warlord's Great Hall. As such, it certainly seems as though this rogue Sith has great influence and power during one of the various Sith empires of the Old Republic. Number 2. Darth Desolus Having first appeared in Legends as the foe to be fought by Starkiller in the Force Unleashed video game, Darth Desolus may have been one of the Lost Twenty, a group of Jedi Masters who left the Order such as Darth Tyrannus, though legends suggest he was expelled. A Padawan Dark Lord of the Sith, legend saw Desolus raising an army in revenge where 2,000 Jedi were killed in the ancient past. While it's unknown if that event remains canon, the Solos himself was canonized thanks to the Sith Eternal Legions in The Rise of Skywalker. Number 1. Naga Sado A creation of the expanded universe for Knights of the Old Republic, Naga Sado was made canon thanks to Rise of Skywalker with a massive statue featured on the Sith world of Exegol. Having led on the first Sith Empire, Nagasato was an incredibly powerful Sith Lord in the Star Wars galaxy. It's even believed that the Masasi temples on Yavin 4 were constructed in his name as he was viewed as a dark god and deity. Alright, so what are you guys thinking? Let me know in the comments down below. And thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and subscribe, make sure to also like and I will see you in next time.